What are the genres that come to mind when you think of Metroid? Obviously there's adventure as well as action. They're easily the most intertwined to the games. You could extend out a bit more to say that Metroid is also a platformer of sorts, with some hints of a puzzle game to it as well. Except, sometimes that puzzle is, know what you're doing already, dickhead. But personally, an element that's somewhat underlying within the series is horror. This is more to interpretation, but I think a lot of what defines Metroid is congruent with elements designed to keep the player uneasy. For one, you're exploring these expansive settings filled to the brim with hostile aliens, ranging in the quote-unquote cunning god of death to an enemy called Azuma. You have these cold, distance-sounding scores by the composers that emphasises how isolated Samus Aran is, with little to help her than herself. The only thing that quashes Metroid from being a full-on horror game is that, by and large, the progression of Samus's power is parallel to the enemy she faces. But all it'd take is Metroid Fusion to challenge that ideology. I roughly knew what I was getting into with the original trilogy. Beyond Super Metroid, it's less understood. From its release, there was then an eight year period of no Metroid, until 2002, which left you spoiled for choice, but that one is for a later day. When you consider the development team for all Metroid games discussed so far has been from the same Nintendo branch, along with the gradual improvements in each entry, I was excited to play a modern Metroid title, although, according to a lot of people behind the game, this was something where they were willing to take more risks. The series designer Sakamoto Yoshio opted to take a wholly new approach to Fusion and challenge the team with making something different instead of retreading old games. The lead programmer also took inspiration from Wario Land 4 over the previous Metroid games, something he had worked on the year before. I unfortunately haven't played that yet, though an ostensible glance online made me intrigued that a platformer was the biggest point of inspiration for the game, so I had no idea what I was getting into properly. With that in mind, let's get into Fusion. Of course, that's not before acknowledging that only Jerry and now a few others are subscribed to my channel. It's great for him to see that he and his oregano have convinced upwards of three people to join my channel, which is especially useful since his wife left him. In a similar vein to Super Metroid, Fusion uses exposition as the initial driving force for the game's story. Unlike Super, however, where it pieces together events of previous games, here the story diverts quite sharply. Samus and a team of scientists at Biologic were investigating SR388, the setting for Metroid 2, monitoring the planet's species. In that investigation, a parasitic life form unbeknownst to Samus surprised and infected her, which later attacked her whilst in her ship, leaving her in critical condition, only to be saved by a vaccine developed from Metroid DNA obtained from the baby she extracted. With her life saved again by a Metroid, her mission is now to return to the space station Biologic holds. An apparent explosion occurred, and with it holding the extracted life forms plus remnants of Samus's parasite, now given the nomina X, it could make for a terrible time. Or maybe it's just a misunderstanding and Samus can just leave. Wow, what a great adventure. Whilst the original trilogy's traversal is implicit, Fusion instead has an explicit waypoint in the form of Adam, Samus's navigation computer, who tells the player to go to the quarantine bay where the life forms were previously. Upon its discovery, the same style of mutated alien that Samus attacked is the only life form there. This means that X escaped and can spread throughout the station. Samus thus has to venture through it, trying to find and conquer X. So let's quickly talk about the framing for Samus in Metroid. Throughout the first three games, beyond the brief storytelling in Super, you don't know anything about her. She's an archetypal silent protagonist, a surrogate for the player to frame themselves in. Considering she's been able to conquer two planets filled with enemies single-handedly, it wouldn't be a leap to say that Samus is a pretty good space hunter too. She wasn't stuck on Zebes with Mother Brain, Mother Brain was stuck on Zebes with her. This is the first time where Samus goes from hunter to hunted, for a few reasons. Initially the infection from X weakens Samus, something that Adam reminds her of saying that she only has a 10% survival rate at the beginning of the game. When traversing the early game main deck, these zombie researchers do considerably more damage than typical early enemies. The trade off is that they're still an easy one shot kill, yet it demonstrates how fragile Samus is comparatively. But hey, you could maybe ignore some of those reasons. If you're familiar with Fusion, you know exactly what makes Samus prey rather than Predator. This is the X-Mutation of Samus, dubbed as SAX. It's my favourite enemy in the Metroid franchise so far by a considerable mile, and it's what makes Metroid Fusion so special. Everything now pivots around the constant threat of an enemy that will fuck you up, and it is the first enemy that feels like Samus has to get upgrades for to survive, not to explore. In every other game, 
Bar the Metroids, you usually can defeat any enemy with a regular beam shot or missile. Most upgrades feel catered for traversal primarily. Because Sax is a carbon copy of Samus at her strongest, and will kill you super quickly, the upgrades are framed as a constant lifeline for Samus, to elongate her survival until X finds her. With Metroidvanias focusing on the idea of acquiring power over time until you're at a peak form by the end of the game, the motivation for doing so in Fusion is magnified. You want to get the upgrades, because if you don't, you're dead. Vulnerable is not really an adjective I'd describe Samus when playing Metroid, but the few set pieces where Sax rears its head makes for wonderful tension. Moments like this, where the power goes out and you're shrouded in darkness, or better yet, the most hostile sounding footsteps you've heard on a Game Boy. It's horror, there's no other way to describe it. Though it's not quite as entrenched in the genre as this comparison, it makes me think of Nemesis from Resident Evil 3, or Mr. X from Resident Evil 2. Hey wait a minute, the last thing I'll touch on for now is its introduction, because man, that reveal is just something else. The completely blank eyes, the cold sweeping sound, far and away the best thing about Fusion. But there's still a lot to like about the game. I'm trying to think of where to start, but I think it's best to keep with the theme of enemies. Or should I say, enemy. As X can store the information of hosts they've infected, they occupy every single obstacle as familiar or different enemies. You see a whole cast of them throughout the game. The sprite work on these is tremendous. Going back to the zombie researchers from the beginning are possibly some of my favourite enemies to showcase this, with a fantastic animation when it's defeated and when it respawns. In retrospect, the enemies in previous entries felt a bit stagnant, whilst here there's quirks and movements that create a sense of life to them, which is a very morbid twist given every enemy here is a singular parasite mimicking them. A consequence of enemies being part of the X parasite is conversely the benefit that, when you kill them, a remnant of X appears for Samus to potentially absorb. The yellow variations are like energy pellets, whilst the green parasite is a very oddly shaped missile recharge. There is a great level of balance and fusion for the minor enemies now. You do take more damage than in other games. No matter how many energy tanks I picked up, I knew it didn't guarantee my success or survival. As a trade-off, every enemy always drops something for the player's benefit, which is a really nice reward risk system. Adding on to that, I love how this emphasises the vulnerability you're in, that if these basic enemies can cause trouble, God forbid when you have to face Sax. Oh shit, it's right underneath me, but uh, I have to go this way. Uh, Samus, you've got this one bro. Speaking of her, Samus and her control in this game is incredibly responsive. I played this on the Wii U Virtual Console because you know, I'm not going to emulate a game, I'm going to pay money for Nintendo to emulate it for me. My brain is far too big for this world. But while playing it I used the Wii Classic controller and I had zero issues. Her repertoire is largely the same as Super, excluding the grappling hook and x-ray scope, although now the button mapping is much more user friendly in my opinion. It turns out in Super Metroid you can literally just press the Y button to cancel the item you've selected at the top, rather than what my dumbass thought where I cycled through all the options every time. Again, my brain is just monstrously large. Thank you to the comments that pointed this out for me. That said, Fusion remedied this so now it's Luca approved and Luca safe. Missiles are mapped to the R button when standing or crouching, power bombs are mapped to the R button when in ball form, and super missiles are just a standard upgrade to regular missiles. There's no cycle to go through, everything has its own place. It's all really useful stuff. The only thing I struggled with was using the L button and down to aim diagonally at the floor, as that used to be the R button, but I got used to it. However, there is one massive inclusion in Fusion. This is something I had no idea I needed until I got it, and when I did, I never wanted to go back. By no means is platforming particularly egregious in any game, but a recurring event that would happen when I play is Samus jumps up to a platform, nicely rubs up against it, and then I have to try again. Look, I get it Samus, you're a bit extra and somersaulting is your thing most of the time, but Fusion Samus has been keeping up with her crossfit, to the point that now any jump you're making has a wider radius for it to succeed. Such a great inclusion for the game. Not only is it seamlessly integrated into level design so it doesn't feel out of place, it also is a massive quality of life improvement that makes the platforming much more fluid. The level design in general is great too. I'd say Fusion harkens back to Return of Samus' world style the most, largely through the new navigation system. Within the space station there are six sections of different environments for her to venture. Each one begins with a navigation room for directions and the map, a save room for a checkpoint, and a recharge room to be at 100% before beginning. Similarly to the earthquake indicating you're able to progress beyond where the acid cuts you off in Metroid 2, Fusion basically has a computer that goes, yeah you're Gucci, and you just move on to where it says to go next. 
though the difficulty of the exploration or the mission will gradually increase over time, often requiring the player to find holes around the existing map in order to find shortcuts to progress through. The structure for the gameplay here becomes much more of a linear mission-based style. For point of comparison, let's say that Return of Samus was in that style. If you were to lay out the instructions in a rough guide, it would be, in this particular area, take out X number of Metroid, as well as maybe obtain the Spider Ball. Though there's direction, you're not shown what order to do things. Fusion lays out fairly clear instructions at the behest of the navigation rooms and the option in the start menu. Whether it's download an upgrade for your suit or fight a boss to collect an upgrade, it will then require you to go back to a navigation room and be pointed towards your next objective. Though this sounds restrictive, the level design accommodates exploration despite it. The path to an item will never be as straightforward as it's made out to be, so you're left to your own devices to find the correct way forward. This simultaneously doubles up with a non-linear direction that encourages finding extra items like missiles and energy tanks. Genuinely, I think this is the best format I've played so far in a Metroid game. It has my ideal balance of as overt a navigation you can get so far, while being as equally covert as other games. On top of the fact it's the most forgiving in terms of grinding by just allowing the player to heal up before every new area. It's so refreshing to have grinding trimmed from the main meat of the adventure. This doubles up with being arguably the least cryptic game so far as well. Even without the x-ray scope, the number of times that I got stuck in the game without knowing where to go was at its lowest. I guess some could say it's a little too on the nose on occasion, with some blocks having a certain outline that sticks out or a particular tile that hints at a spot, but I found it perfect for me. I also think the bosses in Fusion are above average. There are 12 which you have to face at some point, but I'll save the final two for the last part. I appreciate that all of them seem to have specific weaknesses and approaches to defeating them, though I will say a few of them really weren't for me. For one, Zazabi, burn in hell, you're gross, disgusting, F tier. Others are fairly okay. I don't feel too strongly about a few early game ones, but I absolutely loved the fights against Nightmare, the security robot round two, and Neo Ridley. All of them felt like an utter tribulation, as they took a lot of patience and trial and error to get right. But the vindication when I was able to take down a boss that took multiple attempts to defeat was glorious. They, much like the game, are excellent. And just for the cherry on top, every boss door is blocked by a Ghidorah, which drops a red variant of the X-Parasite that gives an incredible amount of health and missiles before a major fight goes on. The attention to care in Fusion is just magnificent. I can imagine it gets quite boring to hear a guy just gush about a game for, I don't know, like 18 minutes. But I truly think that Fusion is fantastic. That being said, while this isn't fully a negative, I will say my least favourite part of the game is the story, which thankfully can help me wrap things up. Skip to here if you don't want to be spoiled on it, I personally don't think you're missing out on much, but if you watch it, it's your call. So some deep space shit is happening in Metroid Fusion, man. Though Metroids were considerably wiped out in the past few entries, Samus stumbles upon a secret lab within the space station where many Metroid aliens are being cultivated, demolishing sacks before the lab explodes. For most of the game, Samus had been following orders at Adam's discretion, though she only found this by going off the beaten path, which the computer lambasts her for doing. It's then notified to her that the Federation is coming in to sort out X, which, I mean, dude, really? However, while Samus and Adam have a dispute, only when she calls him by the name that she gave him does a switch occur in how the computer operates. The late Adam Malkovich, the computer's namesake, is revealed to be controlling the computer, and orders Samus to send the space station towards SR388. However, in order to do that, you have to beat Sax. Just going back for a second, I don't mean to say that the story is bad so much, just more the fact that it's a bit of an exposition dump a lot of the time. I appreciate the different direction taken, it just didn't stick the landing quite like the other risks taken. Although, all of this building to a final confrontation with Sax? Awesome. It was a boss fight that took me quite a few tries to get right, because it really does feel like you're facing a mirrored all-powerful Samus. Yet, from the few set pieces where you had to stay as silent as possible so as to not die immediately, to running away by the skin of your teeth, you finally get that sense of a metroidvania by eventually being able to take out the one enemy that tormented your entire journey. And still, it doesn't end there. With the compromise of the Metroid Lab, just as you're about to escape, an Omega Metroid stands in your way and takes you down to 1 HP, before, as is tradition, a major enemy comes through to be a martyr for Samus' survival. X petered away from Samus before she set the path of the spaceship and reappeared right as the Omega Metroid was about to take you out. This leads to it finally devolving into its own parasitic format, allowing it to be absorbed. Samus can now blast her way through the final boss that, in all honesty, isn't as compelling a fight, but likewise to Mother Brain in Super, is still a great send off to the game.
Now, after beating Super, I was convinced that it was going to be far and away at least the best 2D Metroid. Now, it's anybody's race. Except for these two, they can just scamper away. Fusion was fantastic. The risks and new ideas put into the series made for an excellently unique spin on the franchise. Sax might be one of my favourite Nintendo villains that helped drive the atmosphere and tension through the roof. The level layouts were fine-tuned to minimise confusion, yet retained the great exploration of the series. Samus's control is at its best in this game. Every enemy has a perfect balance thanks to the damage given as well as their drops. The sprite work and music, while I didn't really touch on it, are still brilliant. God, Metroid is bloody good, isn't it? Makes me all the more excited to debut a particular review style for the next game I'm discussing. The Prime Trilogy will have to hold out a little while longer. As for me, I'm going to be restarting Metroid again, as Samus' Zero Mission. Hey, how's it going? It's me, the video man. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm quite tired, but I'm just as tired as I am humbled by 436 subscribers. Uh, we're closing in on 500 soon, which is a very big milestone, and I'm very thankful for everyone watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, get vaccinated, uh, trans rights, uh, yeah, uh, uh, like and subscribe, and like and subscribe. Thank you.